The Chumash Community Energy Program is improving the health, safety, comfort, and energy efficiency of buildings in the Chumash community while providing valuable building performance training opportunities to tribal descendants and other local residents. The goal of the program is to improve building performance and reduce costs while creating a pool of talented, qualified building performance professionals to serve the community for years to come. Today we want to introduce our Chumash Community Energy Program which is funded by the EPA's Climate Showcase Communities Grant. The Climate Showcase Communities Grant helps local governments and tribal nations pilot innovative, cost-effective, and replicable community-based greenhouse gas reduction projects. These projects address a range of issues, from waste management to transportation efficiency to alternative energy. The Chumash Community Energy Program is unique in that it addresses environmental issues associated with inefficient buildings while promoting job development within the green sector. The program started in 2011 and we are well on our way to achieving our goal of assessing and upgrading 25 homes and four commercial buildings while training 30 to 60 community members to assess homes, upgrade buildings to be more safe, comfortable and energy efficient, and install solar system. This project has has helped me move along in my environmental career by giving me new job skills and uh, allowing me to become the lead environmental technician and helping supervise these off-site projects. Working here for the energy in the energy program with the tribe has definitely empowered me. Um, I feel like I'm actually doing a service to our community. Everything that we do for solar or home assessments is so that we can save energy, so that we can save CO2, as well as helping our own community. So I have a sense of pride when it comes to that. It makes me want to do good work for our community. And so what the assessment steps are, um, it's a health and safety first. So you, um, the person assessing the home will have a carbon monoxide detector and we'll, the first step will be to just check all of the gas lines and uh, see if they're leaking. And uh, if they are, he will stop work until those are repaired. Um, so they check the outside gas meter, uh, the dryer, anything that uses gas, uh, so your stove, your oven, and the furnace and the water heater typically. Uh, the next step is typically just take a lot of measurements because all the data is put into an energy model and that model um, will calculate the predicted savings. Uh, so you put in the at least one year of energy consumption history in the model, um, as well as where the house is orientated to the sun, any shading, uh, the window dimensions, the window material. So it, it's very technical. You also um, try to see if you can figure out if there's insulation in the walls or not. Is there a barrier underneath the house? Is there insulation there? Is there insulation in the attic? How much? What type? So you get all of these details that you put in the model and then it kind of crunches all the numbers by your climate zone, so it's very specific. Um, you also get the data on the furnace. How old is it? What model is it? And you take very detailed measurements uh, with special equipment so you can tell how effectively the furnace is operating. Same thing with the water heater. We use a thermal imaging camera where we can actually see through the walls and through the ceiling uh, to check if there's insulation or if there's moisture. Uh, we can look for mold issues. We also check um, your duct system. So we have a couple different uh, pieces of equipment that look at is your duct system leaking? So when you do turn on your air conditioner or your furnace, is that air coming back into your house? Or is it being pumped into your attic? Or is it being pumped outside? Um, you know, when you do pay for heat or AC, it can be surprising when you find out that 60% of it actually isn't going back into your house. And that's actually quite common uh, because it's very time consuming to test and a lot of um, the companies that install it don't do it or don't have the equipment to do it because they're not required to. Um, and then the last step is the blower door test. And so this is one that really helps us see how leaky your house is. So you need a certain amount of airflow with the outside in your house just to refresh that air. So it's supposed to be about one air change per hour. Um, 
but when it's more than that, that's when you start to feel really drafty and that makes you feel colder, it makes more dust accumulate in your house, it can contribute to allergies. Um, so we hook up this big fan on your house and we can either pressurize it or depressurize it. It not only tells us in total how leaky your house is, but it also, we walk around the house while that's running and we can see exactly where the leaks are. Um, you know, it's actually kind of okay for them to be coming from doors and windows, but we it's a problem when they're coming from your can lights, for example, or from the switch plates in your walls, because your attic space, your wall space, has all these dust, insulation fibers, and that's all air that you really don't want getting into your house. We look for all those things, and uh, then we identify them. We put all the data in the model, and uh, the model reports out what the key energy savings items might be and what the projected savings is. Um, and then we also have this recommended list. So we use that to inform um, the priority of the upgrades that we recommend. And uh, I make a report for the homeowner and it prioritizes by top health action items then energy action items in order of priority and then general home maintenance items. So the homeowner has all that and if they choose to go forward with an upgrade, um, we work with the local contracting companies, we're informed about all the local rebate options, um, and we also try to wrap in our trainees to hopefully reduce the cost for the homeowner of those options. One example we've done is a uh, LED lighting upgrade. Uh, we were able to do that for a family. We did an assessment of their lights, checked which was most cost efficient, and we decided to put LEDs in their high traffic areas. And we were able to complete that uh, relatively quickly. For our home energy upgrades, we have worked with Allen Associates in Santa Barbara. And what we did, we, we used a blower door on all three complexes, we had three blower doors, we had all three of them going and essentially go through and any air leaks that we've seen, we would go through with the smoke stick and um, any place that we showed leakage we were sealing it and with the blower door going and no drywall or insulation up yet, we were able to see the number actually decrease and the number I'm talking about is CFM 50, so the amount of air coming in, leaking into the house or coming out, it dropped and we were able to see that. Um, with that air sealing upgrade. One example of a home energy upgrade would be using our trainees to go in and replace the insulation in a home. Uh, we're going to try to accomplish this by having a contractor help us do the work. Um, they'll supervise our guys, we'll come in, we'll subsidize the labor with train opportunities and trainees and in the end we'll make a home more efficient by doing these simple upgrades. After all appropriate efficiency upgrades have been implemented, homeowners have the opportunity to pursue solar to reduce their energy bills further and reduce their environmental impact. Energy efficiency measures should always be implemented before installing solar because energy efficiency is often cheaper than solar. Reducing the energy usage of a building allows a smaller, less expensive solar system to cover the energy requirements of the home. Because some of the trainees are paid with grant funding, the cost of installing the solar system is reduced, providing homeowners added incentive to install solar. Once trainees reach a level of proficiency where they do not require much direct supervision, the CCEP subcontracts these trainees out to work for the local contractors. The trainees remain employees of the tribe, and the contractors pay a competitive wage to use these trainees to help install solar throughout Santa Barbara County. The CCEP sends requests for bids out to local solar contractors and works with the homeowner and the contractors to ensure that the best proposal is selected. CCEP trainees then work directly with the solar contractor to install the solar system, gaining valuable job skills and exposure to potential employers while helping promote alternative energy and reduce energy costs. Yeah. 
My name is Karen Evangelista. My name is Mario Evangelista. And we've lived here for over 25 years. I noticed a, a big difference when uh, the heater's on, it's much warmer in the house, uh, it's cooler during the day. Uh, I sometimes I'll walk around the house and I'll see uh, the improvements they've made and it kind of makes me feel like I'm in a older newer home now instead of just an older home. In the past um, because of there was so much uh, uh, heat wasted but with the things that, are, that have already been done what a difference. I'm, a, I'm the average person putting the heater on to, to go off at I think it's 72, 69, something like that. Um, and not finding ourselves turning it up to 75 because it gets too hot. So it's huge. It's a, it, you can really tell. And probably the most important was that there was a gas leak in the house that was discovered in, in the first uh, inspection. And it scared me because I have children in the house. And I realized that although I think I'm a good parent and a good homeowner, I was al allowing somebody in the house that could be harmful for my children and for, and for my family. And As a tribal member, I think that uh, uh, the environmental department has another opportunity. Coming outside and servicing your, the community, the tribal community, is just so uh, supportive. The environmental department is assisting so that we can all be educated on how we could save money and it's not just focused on just that, that area. You're going outside of the... So that I really take pride in that. I really appreciate that. And, uh, and then the opportunity to see the young people go through a training. <laughs> One of the ways I feel this program is beneficial to the community uh, doesn't exactly come from the service we provide, but the pride that they know that our office is taking the initiative to give these training opportunities to tribal descendants. Um, I think that's been the greatest um, resource from this is knowing that we're giving people opportunities and that our office is helping turn out skilled workers and you know just knowing that that from our community we're going to have workers that are going to carry on these new fields um, I think is one of our most is one of the best effects we've had from this. This is a great opportunity I, you know I'm not Shumash but I was you know given this opportunity by them which is great you know they're going through the whole community whether it's in their own or you know an outsider like myself and uh, they're, you know, educating people to do a good thing for the community, whether it's their community or not. Um, they're looking out for the best interest, and I can definitely respect that and relate to it, which is awesome. So try to follow the paths that you match are doing, and, um, you know, it's tough, it's not easy, but um, it's doable. Initially when we started the program, uh, the idea uh, for me as an environmental technician was to serve the energy program as being the home assessor. Uh, later it turned into it was pretty much a full-time job and it was going to take away from my other duties in the environmental office which uh, really got the ball rolling on bringing in new trainees um, at first we didn't have we had a few interested people um, but now the project has picked up speed and we have trainees that are really interested in really taking taking this program um, you know they're really running with it and trying to make it work and uh, there's the possibility that they could someday take these job skills and either work full time in that career or possibly if our trainees gain enough experience we'll have the opportunity to go to other communities other reservations and train them on how to do these upgrades and these home assessments one way that the program has developed is that we have adjusted our strategy recently we started off trying to get a certain number of trainees through the door and get them some amount of experience and what we found is that by focusing our resources on a smaller committed pool of trainees we're able to provide more training and a higher level of training to that smaller number of trainees and this has resulted 
in outside contractors wanting to work with our trainees. They see them as valuable, skilled workers, and um, they request them by name. You know, they get to know some of these guys, and they know they're hard workers, they know they're good guys, and they'll call us up and say, hey, we want so-and-so for this job because we know he's, he's a good worker. And, and um, I see that as a really positive thing because if they're willing to, to ask for these guys by name, they're, they're halfway towards hiring them. <laughs> Pretty much the whole point of this program is to train uh, people and get them to know uh, the ins and outs pretty much of everything. Uh, I took a BPI course and passed the written exam and uh, you know what they're trying to do is I absolutely knew nothing about home energy upgrade. I'd even, I never even heard of it. Um, but you know they paid for my classes, um, they sent me out to different companies to learn this certain kind of work. And now I got a job offer from uh, a place called Wholesale in Santa Maria. And I actually just got an email this morning, them wanting me to fill out an application about how much you know of either solar, HVAC ventilation, uh, construction in general. And um, just to know where I'm coming from, so where they can improve on. Um, and as soon as I do that, um, from what I know, I'll get the job. I've gotten feedback just from elders just on how great everything is or how good of a job um, they give us comments but those little comments really do mean a lot because especially coming from our elders they're recognizing the work that we're doing and for them to do that and just take time to give us a, a nice compliment feels good. The passion to do good and succeed in our tribe really does relate to wanting to show the younger generations. Um, I have a younger shoe match daughter. Um, really sh to get her into the culture and to get her used to being around um, our people, our land, because if, if you grow up not teaching your children your own culture that you come from, essentially a piece of their identity would be missing and they're not really in touch with who they really are and for them you know that the culture is being passed on to the next generation. Knowing that my ancestors lived here for such a long time is one of the reasons I'm really proud to take care of it and be a part of all of our programs, our monitor monitoring, our energy, our landscaping, and all these are focused on taking care of our land and our people. Our people live on the land, and we we try and take care of both. And it's it's a real honor to be back and be taking care of it, and to be working with the office. And you know, I hope someday that our tribal descendants and myself will be not just an environmental office for our people, but for the entire valley. Because this is this is, our ancestors didn't just live on the reservation. We lived in this entire area and we took care of it and we lived on it and we died on it. And that cycle is gonna continue and we just need to make sure this place is here for future generations. The CCEP has been successful in bringing energy efficiency and alternative energy to the tribe's commercial, government, and residential buildings. From a lighting upgrade at a tribally owned restaurant that will save $18,000 per year, to a residential attic, air ceiling, and insulation upgrade that will make the home safer and more comfortable while lowering electricity bills, the CCEP is reducing greenhouse gas emissions and saving money for the tribe. The training component of the program has been a highlight, with over 40 local community members getting trained in skills ranging from installing solar systems to assessing buildings for health, safety, and energy efficiency. Six CCEP trainees who stood out during their energy training were hired to work for the environmental office full-time, working on energy projects and non-energy related projects. Four out of the six trainees are Chumash tribal descendants that now have full-time positions with opportunities for advancement. These former trainees are contributing to the long-term social, cultural, spiritual, and economic prosperity of the tribe 
while forging new career paths in environmental protection.